right? This is really a lot of technical stuff. Uh, but I'll try to keep the, uh, the jargon down and try to hit the high points here. Okay. This is a, kind of like a summary of what's known about derivatives of Buckminster Fullerene in the literature for the last 30 years. And some of it uh, kind of addresses where we're going with our intelligent design uh, of this molecule, where others have left off. Okay, but this is where we came from, so it's so important to know the properties of hydroxylated uh, fullerenes in particular. But what's different about it is that it has a directional hydration hemisphere. Instead of putting the stuff in toluene and trying to react it using peroxides and getting random hydroxylations all over the ball, uh, we have found a way to put this stuff into an oil-water mixture. Okay? What happens when you stir a bunch of oil and water? You get an emulsion, right? You get, you get stuff that's kind of like if you stop stirring, you separate out again. But if you keep it stirring and you add something like a carbon, carbon likes to go to interfaces. Interfaces between water and oil in particular. Now, let's say it's riding along on the outside of a bubble of water in oil or a bubble of oil in water, depending on whether you have more oil or more water, or 50-50. You stir that thing with a high enough shear rate and then you react your uh, hydroxylations onto the Buckminster Fullerene molecule. And if you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, there's our primary patent for anisotropic nanoparticle compositions. Okay, this is something that has never been seen on planet Earth before. It took me 30 years to create this idea. Half the ball is floating in the oil. It never sees the reaction. Okay? The part that's in the water that has a, uh, its face on the other side of the bubble is being highly reacted with uh, peroxides. So you wind up getting a clustered molecule where all the OHs are on one face and there's nothing at all on the other face. Now, what good does that do? It makes it so bioavailable that it sticks to every cell, every blood cell, every cell lipid that you have in your body, including exosomes. What else it does is it takes out every free radical that's floating around in your bloodstream. So if you're out in the sun and you've got free radicals out the kazoo from getting your suntan, or if you've been to cancer therapy and you've got all kinds of free radicals from the radiation in your bloodstream and on your cells, it doesn't matter. This molecule will find it. It will neutralize one free radical with another and create a neutralized species. And because it's a catalyst, it will continue to do so for as long as it's in your bloodstream. So it is highly useful for chemotherapy, and this, there's where I think we're going to get most of our market penetration because nobody has a bioavailable free radical scavenger. They've, they've got free radicals in water that are made out of the older fullerenes that have some water solubility, but they do not have something that sticks to the outside of a blood cell and goes along for the ride, okay? And still sticks into the cytosol, into the water phase. It's also very good for energy so for the guys that like to do workouts, uh, they want to be able to get as many exercise repetitions as possible before that lactic acid builds up and they can't get that weight lifted anymore, okay? How many reps can you do? You can do more reps with this bucky all in your bloodstream than ever before possible, okay? So this stuff is being uh, of very high interest to sports trainers and uh, athletes. And... Going into these hydration layers, uh, what I want you to understand is that even the old-style Buckminster fullerene with no functional groups around it, once this thing obtains a negative charge on the carbon face, in fact, it, contain, it can contain as many as six negative charges, then all of the dipole moments of every species around it will orient with respect to that charge. So you've got water molecules that have a dipole moment, the hydrogens, basically are positive, where the oxygen, where my hand is, is negative. Then you've got the OH groups, and you've got your hydronium ions, and everything else that's floating around out there in the aqueous phase. So they all orient with respect to the charged carbon, but they don't stick to it because there's nothing there to make hydrogen bonds with. 
Now, along comes this hydroxylated phase. You still have the negative charge on the molecule, but you can attract, you know, positively charged uh, uh, hydronium, and you can still attract uh, to, uh, the, the OH radicals, which have a minus charge. This OH has a net positive charge, even though the back of the molecule has a net negative charge. And this is the side that, that sticks to the lipids. When these two see each other, you get this reaction. Dot OH, dot OH, those two free radicals will recombine and they will make hydrogen peroxide. Now, why is that useful? This reaction happens, this water splitting reaction happens every time you go out into the sun. You can't get away from it. And it's those free radicals that react with your DNA and your RNA and cause all kinds of cellular degradation. Your telomeres get shorter, okay? You get older, this is aging. So this is an anti-aging molecule. It stops those free radicals before they go and do any more damage. And this is why this is so effective in our uh, skin cosme uh, cosmetic formulations. It's, everything is based on this, and it works great. So, how many layers you can get? As many as thousands of layers of these onion-shaped water hydrations. And this has all been found with studies, okay, where the people have actually done the studies and the, and, and the modeling on, on this stuff. So, in, we've already talked about the orientation ability of the C60 face uh, onto the lipids. And, uh, you know, here's a macrophage apoptosis that uh, C60 has been known to do. Uh, right there at the my mitochondrial membrane. So we can stop viral infections as well because we just split them open. Uh, and what's really interesting is that uh, human cells, all of them, ha have these outer layers of phosphatidylcholines. Okay? And these charges, this is this uh, phosphatidylcyrene, this is on the inside of the, of the cell. And the phosphatidylcholines are on the outside of the cell. This one. This is positive charge on the outside, right? But on the inside of the lipid, you've got the negative charge. But what's interesting, if you look at this negative, positive, negative, okay, they stack just a little bit offset. Can you, can you think about it like this? A little bit offset? Where every positive charge is next to one negative one? Okay, so that's like bricks. You know when you build a house, when you, you've got bricks, and it, it goes up all and forms this beautiful circle. And that's how cells are held together, okay? Now, if you have a buckyball come in there, and it's got positive charge on one face and negative charge on another, if you don't have enough of this, you're gonna disrupt the membranes of that, of that organism, okay? There are a lot of these, these, uh, uh, these bacteria only have two charge group faces, so it's much easier to disrupt cell membranes, the lipids. And here on the inside, of course, we only have two uh, negative and positive, and they're also offset. But this allows packing at an angle, and that's, you need to get this angular kind of thing going on in order to get this cell membrane to go around a circle. And that's how our life, our cellular life is, is uh, put together. So here comes the buckyball. And uh, we, we always get some negative charge well, in a slightly acidic environment. And you get this hydrogen bonding with your uh, phosphatidylcyrenes on the inside of the, of the cell. And this is very useful because it actually helps us to unfold misfolded proteins. It interrupts salt bridges and things like that. Um, a lot of people who have autism one of the problems with autism is that you are creating misfolded proteins, and that causes neurological uh, uh, problems. So this is actually uh, going to be very big in the, in the uh, brain science. And the number of hydroxylations is also important. If you get eight or more hydroxyl groups, it's going to be very, very favor favorable for this to spend most of its time in the cytosol or in the water layers. If you get less than eight, uh, you're going to have 
uh, more spent more time spent inside the lipid layers uh, of the cell itself. So these are studies that are done on fullerenes that have been functionalized with hydroxyl groups randomly. Okay, this is 30 years of data. We know this already, and we also know how it works. It, it's very able to disrupt the, high, the, the lipid bilayers of, of uh, bacteria, and also open the, the viral capsids of, uh, of uh, viruses. And the capsid is a protein that has positive and negative charges that literally zip this together. So I'm trying to get this to go to the next slide. Here's a summary of what I've talked about on synthesizing our C60 to make the OH functionality in the water and the oil interface, okay? The problem is when you do this using some of the traditional synthesis, or the organic chemists, you can never get all the tiling out when you put this in the tiling. When I do my synthesis, it never touches tiling. And it never carries toluene into your liver, and it never has toluene between the balls. So you never get poisoned with this nasty stuff. So when you buy this stuff that's full, that says it's full of renal, you have to understand that depending on how it's made, it may be extremely poisonous, and you should never use it for medical purposes. It's electronic grade uh, Buckminster fullerenes, or electronic grade uh, fullerenes. They're using using those to make solar cells because they enhance the electron migration of the solar cell itself. Okay, the, the efficiency of your solar cell goes up because those balls charge up with negative charges. Very good for making solar cells. Very bad for eating. <laughs> okay? So you need to be very, very understanding of where you get your raw material and how it was made. You don't want anything with solvent in it and you don't ain't want the stuff that has the hydroxylations all over it because it's not bioavailable. Yes. Question. So basically you have your own uh, method of extracting or? Uh, well, you, you, you can buy the uh, Buckminster Fullerene math uh, uh, with 99.99% synthesized pure. Mm -hmm. What they do is they go through a furnace at 550 degrees C in a vacuum, okay? And it literally vaporizes the C60. And any toluene that might be made in between it during the extraction, when you purify it from the soot and other things that, during the synthesis process, are blown off. And then you've got a cold finger, and all of the uh, uh, Mr. fullerenes will then collect and recrystallize. Okay. So you don't have any possibility of solvent in your pure starting material when you make this stuff. Okay. Didn't you say yeah, you have your own pat patent and process? Yes. Okay, so yes. your process of extracting alone is patented. No, somebody else has got that for for making solvent-free buckyballs. Oh, okay. So I start with pristine material. Okay. I just make sure that I never, ever introduce a solvent to it after it's pure and clean. Oh, okay. Okay? The only yeah. solvent it touches is water, and water is okay. Okay. And, uh, and some oil, if we have uh, an oil in, in, in some of our, our processes, as long as we can separate the oil from the water, it's no big deal. It's okay. an edible oil. So uh, this is the toxicity in the role of the synthesis, kind of like summarizes our, our methods uh, that, we, that we have. Now this is something we probably want to wait for uh, Norman. Uh, he would be very interested to know. Uh, where these buckyballs tend to wind up. Uh, what we're looking at here is a cartoon figure of a mitochondria. Okay? The traditional buckyballs, they'll charge attract and stay inside the lipid layers. See this? This is a figure that's taken directly out of Santos. Uh, this is a publication where he's describing in 2013 the differences of where these nanoparticles tend to wind up inside the cell structures. Now, these mitochondria are actually in your cell, okay? You've got different kinds of structures in your cell. You've got the goggly apparatus. You've got uh, all these other things floating around in your cell, the nucleus. These are like the battery of the cell. This is where all your energy is being 
use to make stuff. It, you know, it's where you get your contraction ability on your muscles. It all comes from these mitochondria. So if they can be made more efficient, if you can extract energy from your glucose more efficiently, of course you're going to have more energy. Of course you're going to be thinking more clearly because all of your neurons need energy. The brain takes a lot of it, okay, and it uses glucose. So this is very neurotropic, okay? This is one of the best neurotropic supplements you can ever get. The fullerenols, these are, again, these are not the, the clustered kind that I make, but the traditional ones will all tend to go, as I had drawn previously, uh, toward the outside where those charge groups are. Whereas the unfunctionalized buckyballs will tend to get hidden in here and they do nothing. The only thing they might do is protect you from a virus. Okay, if the virus tries to get through inside the cell, this thing could get a negative charge and it could explode that viral capsid. That's about all it's useful for. I mean, that's in itself is nice. It makes you live longer, yes. It makes you be healthier, yes. But can it actually uh, destroy uh, bacteria, like periodontal bacteria? No, because it's not out there where it can do any work. So that's why you need to make it better than, than it has been. In mental illness, a lot of these people who suffer from depressive symptoms, bipolar disorder, okay? This is something that is genetically obtained. It is something that is associated with oxidative stress, okay? These things can be addressed by this molecule, okay? You use this as a uh, ability to get past the blood-brain barrier and start fixing what's wrong, okay? So these, these things can, can help not just by themselves, but they can also act as agents to carry existing medications across the blood-brain barrier that would normally not go there. So you have to be careful when you're taking any of this uh, C60 stuff because it will make your prescription level, it could be more potent than it was ever intended to be. If you're on, if you're taking any medications, you need to be very careful because it could literally put these drugs into places where they're not supposed to go. So you need to, you really kind of consult with your medical doctor before you start using this stuff in large concentrations orally. Um, and that's something that we do say in our, in our studies. Uh, the this is kind of like the work that has gone before us on anti-aging antioxidants. C60 is 170 times more powerful than vitamin C. So it's a very powerful antioxidant. It does a lot of great work in preserving your cells from oxidative uh, damage. We've gone so much further than this. We've formed adducts with xanthophils. Okay, xanthophils in particular are like molecular wires, and they can carry electronic charge along the aliphatic chain. Xanthophils, like astaxanthin, are 6,000 times more potent antioxidants than vitamin C. And they couple very well with our anisotropic fullerenols. The two are a combination that is unmatched in the history of medical science when it comes to antioxidants. This is where these things have started but we've taken it quite a bit further. So, what are the health benefits that we know of with the old fullerenols? We already know that it's a very helpful uh, aid for chemotherapy, but our fullerenols are even better at doing this free radical scavenging effect. We already know that uh, geometric cross clustering enhances their antioxidants power non-symmetrically and directionally into the cytosol. Okay, that's what makes us special. The other fullerenols do not. Okay, so when you start combining uh, traditional polyphenols with our materials, you get this synergy going on. It's just really incredible. Very good for people that suffer heart attacks. Okay? And that's another reason that I'm really looking at this uh, very strongly for uh, helping folks that have, uh, uh, you know, difficulty in that area.
So we also are very happy to talk about neural regeneration. In order to get neurons to become uh, plastic for you to learn new things, you need to have branching, okay? So neurons constantly reform. The dendrites on the neurons constantly grow and, re and, and retract and, and grow again. But they tend to not do that unless they're stressed in some way. So because they have this positive, negative, positive, negative charge on the actin filaments. So what happens is if you put some of these between the actin filaments, you create the seed for a new dendritic branch. And this happens most effectively at the filopodia, which is at the end of a neuron, which has got a charge on it that happens to be a positive charge. And the buccioles happen to be a negative charge. So all of a sudden, you become neurally enhanced because your oligodendrocytes will, will be, uh, that's like the brain stem cells that are available for renewal as you go through life will become more able to differentiate and fit in where they need to go. We only have a few data points. But we do know this. In, cl in a clinical study with one patient, we have seen a 40-point IQ increase after one year of taking the X supplement. 40 points is way above the noise level. Okay? There are people out there that are mentally retarded that only have 60 points. <laughs> okay? So being able to get past that mental infirmity and get it to where you can take someone that is borderline able to even function in society and bring them into the normal range of mental acuity, that's a big thing. Okay? So there's a lot that's going to be happening in this area with respect to neural regeneration. And not just people that were hit by cars that have concussions, okay? We're talking about people that were born with mental deficiencies that can be brought into the area where they can become functional members of society. Uh, we also know that this stuff is very good in tumor reduction for a, a, a procedure that's called photodynamic therapy. Tumor reduction happens when you've got the buckyballs floating around in your system especially on solid tumors, which are very difficult to get anything to penetrate into. And the reason it's so effective is because the buckyballs are solid particles too. <laughs> okay, solid particles stick to solid particles. It's not a liquid drug, okay, so it's not going anywhere. That the liquids go, it likes to attract to those places that have positive charge. And tumors are also sites of great inflammation with lots of positive charge. So the buckyballs love to stick to this stuff. So what they do is uh, what, what I want you to understand about this photodynamic therapy, it's a procedure that's been in place now for oh, more than a quarter of a century, is they use infrared radiation to stimulate blood flow. But think of the, bu the Buckminster uh, fullerene molecule as also being excited by infrared radiation. So the buckyball is normally spherical, but when you have a resonant uh, energy from the infrared radiation, it actually forces this thing to become like a football, and it vibrates like a football. That makes it much more reactive. And when the clustered fullerenes are at the end of the football, while it's undergoing this infrared radiation, it increases its antibacterial property and anti-cancer properties by more than a hundredfold. So we have a patent out there right now that not just addresses solid tumor reduction, but burn victims, people that can't have a chance of surviving after they got more than 50% of the skin burned off their body. Those people, they die because of infections. If we can put non-thermal infrared light on them, the kind that doesn't feel hot, okay? This is the kind you, you can't see. It still activates those buckyballs. We can make them much more able to not just reduce tumors, but use the same photodynamic uh, protocols on the burn victims so that they can survive until, the, until all of their, their skin can slowly be uh, healed. So 
that's another uh, uh, thing that we have going. And going back on to the Alzheimer's patients, this is a published work with a functional Buckminster Fullerene that's not ha that doesn't happen to be the one that, that I'm making, but it's close enough. You see, it's got one functional group on one side. So this does have some anisotropic character. But what it's able to do is break up the salt bridges in the beta amyloid plaques and make them string out to where the body can chop it up and get rid of it. Okay? And this happens as you get older, the cell membranes get oxidized and thicker. So there's more and more possibilities for these uh, amyloids to get tangled up with each other like a bunch of spaghetti noodles. It's part of the process of getting Alzheimer's disease. So if you can thin down your cell membranes and you can break the salt bridges between your amyloids, you know, that's going to help you get rid of some of the problem uh, in, in your Alzheimer's uh, disease progression. So this is stuff also that has been published. So we know this works. We have an astaxanthin adduct on ours that is highly more effective than what was published back here in 2017. And that is also going to go into trials in China. So that's where we're very happy to uh, have some progress in the near future. Uh, for the vascular health, you need to understand these buckyballs also act as ball bearings between polymer filaments. Now, what does a ball bearing do for you? It rolls, right? So rolling is kind of like it lets things flex, it lets things move, it lets things roll. But if you can permeate the buckyballs into these arteries and veins that have been uh, inflamed, positively charged, okay, the negative to the charged buckyballs will find their way to them. It will charge attract and stick there. But more importantly, you will not be getting a stroke in your aneurysm if you're taking the CEX supplement because the plasticity of your veins or your arteries is going to be enhanced. They'll be like little ball bearings. You'll be able to expand and contract, whereas before you were not able to. An aneurysm is when these things get so tight and they can't expand any further that you get what's called biaxial stress failure. That means you're trying to pull in one direction and pull in another direction, two different axes, and then the material fails. If you get this to pop in your brain, and this causes a hematoma in your brain, you, you're probably going to die. You're going to die from bleeding to death in your brain. That's how people die from strokes, okay? So you, if you can't fix this with brain surgery, then, you know, you just, one day you're going to wake up dead. But if you can fix this, even in the very smallest arteries and veins where, the, where surgery can't go, then you can prevent this from happening. So people that have strokes need to really look closely at using YEX as a plasticizing agent for the vasculature. So those are kind of like emerging applications. But I also want you to think of these buckyalls as carriers. They're like little magnetized ball bearings with spaces in between that can carry anything. And that includes denatured, inactivated viruses. Okay, right now what do we use? We use little chopped up bits and pieces of viruses. And they get mostly taken out by our macrophages and everything else in our system that gets rid of junk. But if you can get this past all of those and you put them in between those buckyballs and let them float around for a while, your, your, your vaccination is going to be much more effective. And it's also an immune system booster uh, with uh, these other poly uh, herb polyphenols that we talked about earlier. So you can actually mix and match these things. So if there's a, some kind of a pande pandemic that comes out, if we've, we can find something that can help these people in a hurry, uh, probably the buckyballs would be the fastest way to get that introduced into your system because you may only have days to live before this stuff uh, 
can kill you, you know. So you want to be able to apply a fix, some kind of an antiviral fix, uh, while while the uh, the plagues are, are are going on. So in the future, we see this as being something that might be helpful. So just to summarize here, one of the major health benefits we get from our hydroxylations. Now this is kind of like a simplified uh, two-dimensional cross-section of what really happens with the three-dimensional face. One face has got the hydroxylations in it, okay? So I'm just drawing just these, but understand that this one here and this one here and this one here also have hydroxylations that come out. But I'm just showing this to, sh to, to, to say this is the face that's the water-loving face. This is the face that wants to be in the lipids. And if you have something that can turn a little bit, and all of these angles are effective at being antibacterial and antiviral because of their poking out into the cytosol, you don't have to wait for the molecule to be at the right angle to do its job. Now look at this. This is what nature provides us. Quercetin, resorcinol, uh, these are wonderful antibiotics, curcumin. But what do they have in common? is they're mostly just flat. It's like, it's like this piece of paper. Okay, if the OH is sticking out, it's going to see you, it's going to do its thing to the virus or to the bacterium, and when it's not sticking out and the virus or the bacterium is here, what's going to happen? Nothing. Because you've got nothing there that shows its face to do the reaction. But if this thing is not a piece of paper, if it's a ball and there's lots of spikes sticking out, then it doesn't matter. The ball will always be pointing at your virus, will always be pointing at your bacteria. It doesn't matter if you have that angle be perfect or not. It can still do its thing. So your ability is enhanced not only because of having lots of hydroxylations, but by having them at multiple angles of attack. Okay? So now you can combine this with these. Can you imagine these hydrogen bonded at all different angles. It's like a sea of swords that are sticking out, taking naturally very effective antibacterial materials and poking them on one face of that sphere and making it into, into a, literally a nest of, of sea urchin type spines sticking out highly effective against uh, the bacteria that you would like. So this is kind of like where we get a game-changing chemistry going on. It's, it is game-changing. It's taking what nature has made that we know works and putting it onto a substrate to make like a battleship. <laughs> okay, and we set that free to cure the periodontal disease or whatever it is that we want to get rid of to boost our immune systems. And here we've got the light activation for the burn victims. Again, the infrared radiation makes this thing turn into a football. OK, now all the electrons are on this space. And this positive charge is enhanced as all these get clustered together. So as this thing oscillates in the infrared radiation, you get this in the Raman spectrum. You see a little bit of a shift of your absorbance frequency because the ball is changing its diameter. And it does so in an oscillating way. That means these are going through highly, un, you know, they're, they're uh, what's called a metastable state. They're much more reactive for a short period of time at the top of that oscillation than they would ever be under static conditions. And then they go back through a zero state where the ball is symmetrical again, and then you you get the formation again. So the light activation is therapeutic on this molecule. So everything we just talked about becomes enhanced yet again if you provide infrared activation. This is going to be important also for periodontal uh, uh, work. If you can put these 850 nanometer lamps uh, around the gum line while this thing is going on at night, it can become even more effective. And that's also disclosed in our patent. So let's look at arthritis. This is kind of like a cartoon. Okay, this cartoon shows the rotator cuff, okay, of someone that's maybe got arthritis in this joint. 
maybe you've got it in your hip joint. All these places where you tend to get inflammation. The soft tissue, this part of our ear, this, this is cartilage, okay? It's all full of collagen fibers. And they're all positively charged. And what does buckyballs like to do? It sticks to where the positive charges are because they're negatively charged. They go to where the inflammation is. They're not going to go where there is no inflammation. They're going to find where the inflammation is and they're going to stick there. And that's what you need to kill the bacteria that are causing the inflammation. And they have what something like six different varieties of therapies and treatments for multiple different kinds of arthritis. Now, with Buckyall, you've got one material that addresses every different kind of arthritis. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm not saying you shouldn't be using the other materials as part of symptomatic relief, but once you've got Buckyballs in your system, you'll never need to buy any more drugs. Because after about three months, you won't have arthritis anymore. It's over. Years and years and years and years of pain, chronic pain, gone. It's not going to matter if we get a claim approval or not. People are just going to look at this stuff and say, this stuff works. <laughs> okay? We're going to be okay. And then we're going to make so much money on this stuff, we'll be able to eventually pay for the clinical study to say, oh, by the way, we can now put it on the bottle. <laughs> right now we can't. But there's enough evidence for therapeutic uh, properties, even in the fullerenols that are on the present market, that you can look up the studies and, sh and, and find evidence for this in the existing literature. It's just not enough of an effect to be worth going into a secondary or third stage clinical trial. We think with our anisotropic fullerenols that it will become worth it. The effect is large enough to go into second and third stage clinical trials. Okay? We're hoping at some point to be able to get to do that if we find the right person that has a kind heart that wants to help people. And we're doing this mostly to help people all over the world and that's what we're focusing on is positive change for an improvement in the human condition. So we want to be able to use this. This is what my, my teacher and my former uh, employer, uh, Rick Smalley, at Rice University gave me as a task. He said, find some way to get this stuff useful. It's got so much potential. He saw it in his head, but he was dying of leukemia. And he, he said to me, I am going to be paying for your PhD. You go finish that, and then you think about this stuff. If it takes you 20 or 30 years, find a way to make this stuff even better than it is. We know where we're at. We know we can't take it much further. But you are the persistent guy who will not give up. Other people will move on. They'll forget this molecule. But you won't. Why? Because he knew that there was something special about me. I was very focused. And I don't mind admitting I'm autistic. I'm a, what's called an autistic savant, right? That's somebody who just focuses all the time. Can't turn himself off. And he saw that in me. He knew that there was something different about me. And he funded me to get me knowledgeable enough to where I can help a lot of people. So if you, if, if thanks go to anybody, it's thanks not because I was the smartest kid in this class, because I never took a class from him. I was a student as an employee. I studied all of his papers. I was able to recite every one of them to him. I knew exactly what he did. And he knew that I knew. It wasn't that I was all that smart. It's because I was interested in this topic, and it has been my focus for decades since, he's, since he died. So I was able to finally make this breakthrough in the, in the synthesis, and it's going to go and support all of these kind of arthritis uh, types of work that have come before me and make them even better, OK? This is, I mean, you can read all these papers. They talk about uh, how fullerenol nanoparticles suppress inflammatory response in arthritis. It's all over the place. They're just not quite effective enough. You see what I'm saying? They just needed a little bit of intelligent design on the molecule to make them get over that 
thing that was holding them back from being as therapeutic as they could be. And people were not thinking, they were not seeing, they were not taking the time to try to design the, the uh, anisotropy into the molecule. You know, and, and if they did think of it, they didn't know how to do the synthesis because they weren't chemists, okay? So it languished, it languished for years and years. But I was never going to give up on this. And I'm the one with this patent. So if you want this, I give it to you. I don't want to make a lot of money on it, but it's protected so that it can reward the people who make this stuff, who sell this stuff, give them some profit so they can do their job, okay? That's what I want to have happen out of this stuff. So in summary, we've got something that's already a super antioxidant, and it's even more of an antioxidant because you can bond super antioxidants to it. It's stable. The stuff's been encapsulated uh, in meteorites, in minerals, uh, since the dinosaur meteor uh, crashed in the Yucatan Peninsula 60 million years ago, okay? Contributing to the die-out of the dinosaurs. It was a carbonaceous chondrite. The chemical energy of that impact was so great it formed buckyballs in the minerals, and they're distributed all throughout the planet in a layer at the CT boundary. 60 million years of shelf life, waiting for us to find them, extract it from the, from the soot layer, to find out those buckyballs are still as good as the day they were made. <laughs> so this stuff isn't going anywhere, okay? It's very, very stable. You can make this stuff without contamination of solvent using my oil and water patented chemical synthesis. Okay, no need to fear of toluene or uh, tetrahydrofuran or all those nasty industrial solvents. You don't need to touch this stuff. In fact, if it's in your liver, if you've been exposed to glue or toluene solvents and the stuff is still in your liver, it will take those. It will intercalate, which means into the spaces around the balls, and eventually go out with your waste. In, in the cytosol, it will get carried out through your kidneys. You will actually detox. It will detoxify you because it will carry out all of those solvents that you've been exposed to in your technological societies, in your industrial polluted air. It will take them out of your body. Okay, so this stuff is actually good for detoxing. And for those people that have been exposed to nasty solvents in their life that get cancer or they don't want a remission, they're in remission or they don't want a recurrence of cancer, you need to also do something about what causes the mutagenicity in the first place. Okay, you've got this tetrogenic stuff in your liver. Tetrogenicity from, well, it's going to cause you another cancer. If you can get it out of your body, maybe you won't get that cancer to come back. Okay, maybe that's what you need. Not just chemotherapy, not just get rid of the cancer, but stop it from coming back again because you still got these mutagens in your... So this is, this is another, like... A, like a preventative care. You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's also going to save us a lot of money in society. You don't want repeat customers in, in cancer, cancer ward. And, of course, water soluble. And thank you very much, and I appreciate your, your time. And I hope uh, I've uh, clarified what the difference is between our full renals and the, the traditional full renal molecules so that you can take that home with you and remember the des design intent. The design of the molecule is so important. It's not just that you made this cool stuff, but how do you use it? How do you get it actually become bioavailable and do useful things in the human body?